Are you doing a podcast or a video with this? I'm going to do both. Okay. Yeah. And I look like this? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You look, you look fine. You look fine. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was like, hey, this is no big I'll just wear this shirt. It's like, whatever. <laughs> I don't have the background quite set up right. It's whatever. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. All Lesson right. Lesson learned. Okay, got it. Okay. All right, here we go. Welcome to Bible Study for Progressives, a show where moderates, liberals, and leftists of all faiths and ideologies come together to discuss scripture, spirituality, and politics. We engage scripture in its historical context, plumb its depths for wisdom and guidance, and apply its lessons to current events and social issues. Whether you're a liberal evangelical a New Age spiritualist, a social justice activist, or a postmodern theologian. There's something in this show for you. Come, be energized in spirit and mind to understand the word and what it means to be a spiritual person in today's world. I kind of look at it like that you know trump has had his accusations i haven't gotten into the nuts and bolts of it trump has his accusations anybody supporting trump that's trying to make a big deal out of biden i just have been like whatever um right right whatever is probably a good response yeah yeah you know like <laughs> you know i don't know how you can possibly you have no credibility which is also why they've tried to shift the conversation to kavanaugh you'll notice which right. is different than Trump. A year ago, I think, in May or June, I wrote something about Biden having an issue with, Women. you know, touchy-feely stuff. Yeah. And yeah, double yeah, standard with that. And so kind of, this is kind of new, uh -huh. but it's kind of really along those same lines. Right. So when they nominated him, I just kind of was like, you know, when it looks like it's going his way. Yeah. I don't want to say I just threw my hands up in the air, but I kind of did. Mm -hmm. because it something was, you know, I mean, if it wasn't her, it was going to be the hugs. It was going to be the touching. It was going to be this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I just thought this is, it's, it, it was, it was coming. And my, my point with the touching and the hugging thing is defenders would say he didn't, first of all, he got a lot of razz in the media before mm -hmm. under the Obama administration. He got, you know, they were kind of slamming him for like, Joe stopped being creepy, and this was from the liberal media, even when he was vice president. You could see people, kids and women, were sometimes clearly uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And you know, and his defenders would say he didn't mean anything by it. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Malicious. Well, and my, my point was there's two people, there's two groups in the world. First of all, a white male okay. can only use that defense. Yeah. And, and because black guys don't get to, you know, to say, I didn't have a gun. It's what the police think they had. And women in business are always skirting around how everybody's perceiving them, right? right? And so that was my point with him is like, I can't believe this is the defense because mm -hmm. it only seems to work with white men on top of it. And that's how I kind of took the whole thing and thought if they nominate them, you know. Should we believe Tara Reid, her story could be true. We can't really know. We want to support women who have been abused. She could be lying, but that's hard to swallow. It is important, however, that we not infantilize women and act as if they're all pure and innocent. There are parts of the case that seem believable. There have been investigations that found nothing and allege new facts that have shed new light on the matter. The allegations are old from when Biden was a senator and are difficult to prove or defend against now. Why these allegations and why now? 
We can't really know whether the allegations are true or not, but we can question the motives for disseminating the information now. Deciding who to believe is purely a matter of loyalty. Loyalty is no basis for making determinations of fact. Women who are loyal to third parties or to feminism or to the Me Too movement will tend to believe Reid, while those loyal to the Democratic Party are likely to be more skeptical. Our loyalties not only make us biased, they also make us vulnerable to manipulation. Propaganda is essentially any material that attempts to influence our beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. Propaganda is actually value neutral. It's either good or bad, depending upon the intentions of the propagandist. Here, we can be pretty sure of the intentions of the right-wing media outlets disseminating the terror read allegations. It is the eve of the election, and Biden has just secured the Democratic nomination for president of the United States. That's when the propagandist began to push this story, not before Biden secured the nomination, but immediately afterwards. If they were truly concerned about Biden becoming president, why wait until after the primary? The party could have simply turned to another candidate with, were these allegations made during the primary. The propagandists are trying to undermine the Democratic nominee in order to get Trump reelected. The propagandists are the right wing media outlets spreading the story and the left wing third party outlets who have picked the story up. Their objectives coincide with right wing groups to the extent that they see the Democratic Party as the enemy. As we can see, Kara Reid may not be the propagandist here. The propagandists are the right-wing media outlets who have the ability to bring this matter to the public's attention at this crucial time. Tara Reid may simply be a pawn in a high-stakes game. Without considering Tara Reid's credibility, we can see the propagandist intentions. Rather than asking who we believe, we should instead consider how to respond. If we continue to respond in the ways that the propagandist wants us to, we can expect to see more of these types of allegations against our candidates in the future. Even if Tara Reid's accusations are true, we can't simply react emotionally in ways that cause us to act against our own interests. Propagandists want to turn us into their agents. Groups of people are easily manipulated. The propagandist uses group dynamics to manipulate us. They need only get some of the group to react adversely, to cause division and factionalism. They target our loyalties and emotions to override our critical thinking. When we react emotionally or out of loyalty or out of any of the logical fallacies propagandists use to manipulate us, we hand our power over to the propagandist and destroy ourselves both personally and politically. We become tools of the puppet master who targets our emotions and group loyalties to make us act against our own interest. If we don't think before we react, we are destined for self-destruction. Okay, that's it. Now I'd like to turn to our media psychology specialist, Lisa Snow, and um, ask her, so Lisa, what do you think about my article? I think it was spot on. Thank uh, you. The, the things you mentioned are absolutely perfect as far as how propaganda works. It appeals to um, emotions, group loyalties and everything else to bypass the actual facts of the situation. So people are, are reacting to not the facts, the truth, or what happened or didn't happen, 
but instead they're being driven by other things. And that's really critically important. And I think your point here is to think before we react. And I don't think that can be emphasized enough in today's culture um, with media because we're saturated with media and, and message points that have really been honed to get us to react, not to think, to bypass those thinking mechanisms. So we have to be very, very aware of what's going on. We need to stop ourselves before we react and get ourselves to think about what we're doing, what we're thinking, and what we're saying. And what the consequences are of what our actions will be. That if we react and don't think about the consequences, I mean, we're, we're kind of like children being led around by our nose or by our impulses. We're not really considering reality. And can we really, I mean, these allegations came out at a, this time, right? But they've been around for a long time. and. Uh, they probably should have been handled in a court of law by now. Well, and I think one of the key things, too, is there's another even side issue, and that's just memories. There's been a lot of study on, uh, based on people's memories and how they can degrade over time and how things can get twisted. And that's also a key element of this, too. So it's not saying she is lying. It's not saying anything about it. But we just also have to be careful with that. It's just important yeah. to remember that memories do get twisted. People don't know it. They believe it just as, just with as much certainty. But the memories are not accurate. And it sort of shows because her story has changed over time. And that's one of the reasons why it's difficult to prove such a case. Because you're going so far back in time. I, I think the statute of limitations has run on this already. I understand she shopped it around to a number of lawyers who rejected it, which tells me maybe it's not that great a case. But still, this is not the time or place for that, in a sense, if your just intention is to overthrow our democracy and get Trump reelected. I mean, that is like saying, well, let's not elect this one guy who's not so great, but let's put the rapist in chief. Let's keep him in power. Let's keep the guy who talks about grabbing women's vaginas. Let's say, get the guy who's going to cut all the fundings, ruin our, try and take away our democracy, leave the poor, get us into wars, get people killed. I mean, this is the choice we face. And it's kind of a, is that a Faustian choice? Is that what we mean by that? Or it's kind of like a choice of but we have to make it. We have to make the decision. And we just can't know what really happened. There are a lot of people say, well, I don't want to vote for a racist. I'm so tired of these people. But they just seem to be being affected by the media and the propaganda, and they're emotionally kicked up. But when we have to think critically about it, we might realize, well, why now? That's my big question. We know what the intentions are. We also know it's propaganda because it's meant to persuade us to change our attitudes or beliefs and our behaviors. So we know that that's what it is. And once we learn about propaganda and understand what its intentions are, we might have a little more defenses against these rather than thinking, oh my God, they're all rapists, which, hey, you know, we had Jeffrey Epstein up there, you know, and they might all be rapists. <laughs> we don't really know, but. You know, right now, we've got if best case scenario or worst case scenario. I say worst case scenario, we got a choice between uh, the rapist in the White House and the touchy feely guy who's um, from 1950s or something. Yeah, and I think the key thing too is, you know, there is an element of, you know, the touchy feely thing too. Like you respond, you you said with Biden, and there's a sense of crudeness a crudeness with Trump that is different. It's just touchy feely thing is one thing, but that, you know, you can't, nobody put the words in his mouth with that video. He didn't think that it was going to blow up on him, you know, that it was being recorded or whatever, but it's almost makes it worse because yeah. he didn't think anybody was, he, it was him. There was no polish. There was no, 
pretense. There was no trying to make it look good. It was him doing what he does and what he says when he's just talking to one other person and he thinks nobody else is listening. And that's a little more disconcerting. And he does have a lot of allegations. He's made comments about women that are also from the horse's mouth that that make you wonder. So when those accusations pop up with him, it's like, well, they all have to be considered separately, you know, based on merit and his denials when his lack of, let's just say truthfulness is also in dispute on just about everything. It's a, it's a, it, it does present a different situation. And to your point, this is coming up, when he has he has been nominated it looks like he's going to be the nominee if it was so bad as vice president and she was so disturbed to me it seems like she could have said hey earlier much more strongly much more forcefully yeah and really brought it out even as he was vice president even if it she couldn't get traction in 2008 there was eight solid years of i'm really upset about this and this is what happened and it seems to be now and and there's also just one more quick thing though it's not only the media on the right um i'm seeing this coming from this biden thing is also coming from a faction of the democratic party that's not happy with him being the nominee yeah that's pushing this forward and pushing this forward and pushing this forward so i I just say that in the context of not a fan of right-wing propaganda and i've seen a ton of it but there is another side pushing this. Yeah, I think it's really too late to get Biden out. I don't. I think that's just asking for a lot of trouble. And I, I and sometimes I think that there is a wing of a Democratic Party that is kind of like they got one foot in the Democratic Party and another foot in their third party groups. And we hear this every election: the same, the Democrats and the Republicans are the same. It's not true. I mean, there are similarities. The main similarity between the Democrats and the Republicans and the Socialists is that they're all political parties. And that's the similarity. And the political parties always act to hold on to and take power. That's their goal. And it doesn't matter what party is going to do that. That's the main similarity. But when it comes to the platform and the policies, so if we put, if we allow this to cause us to hand the government over to Trump. Not only could we lose our democracy, but look at all the policies. I mean, Biden may be one of those creepy guys, but look at the difference in policies. You know, Trump is going to hurt women big time. He's going to hurt the African-American community. He's going to hurt the poor. He's done it over and over again. And we're going to get all upset about some allegations that are what, 20 years old? Are they 30 years old? More than 20 years old. They're from the eighties, right? Nine. I think they're from the nineties or eighties when he was a Senator. So old. And it reminds me of academia. Sometimes these academics, they get an idea and they work on and they work on and suddenly they start getting media attention. They don't have any idea why they're getting media attention. All of a sudden that they're popular now. And so they're all out there talking their thing, but not thinking at all about what the consequences are and how they're being used by the media. And I think here we have Tara Reid who's been shopping these allegations around for years and who may have been treated the allegations she made are pretty extreme though, but may have been um, mistreated to some degree. But 20 years later, all of a sudden, what's the only thing that's different is that Fox News has decided to pick it up. And I think it's important to recognize that, I know it's coming from some left-wing sources as well, and Mm -hmm. even the mainstream Democratic media is trying to deal with it the best they can. But the primary sources are the right-wing media sources. If you look at the news, where it's coming from, it's coming from Fox News, the New York Post, all those conservative magazines and newspapers, they're the ones that are pushing this. 
So we have to really take that into consideration when we make these decisions because we can't really, we can't know what happened. And I think if we get into this, that's why this debate, whether we believe or whether we shouldn't, whether she did it, let's look at the evidence. You know, that's for a court of law. We can't make any decisions. We're not making any decisions based on the evidence. We're making decisions based on our loyalty and our political motives. And so if our political motive is to get the Democrats, get Trump reelected, or if our political motive is um, third party, or, or we have more, or we just want to get somebody else in the president nominated, those are what we're basing them on, not on any facts that we heard. And if we want to do a factual analysis, put that in the court of law, put it in front of a jury. 20 years later, it's too late for any of that. Yeah, and I think there's, there's an issue too with, first of all, I was a woman just out of college in like, the, or coming out of college, late 80s, early 90s. I worked in male-dominated industries. It was different then. I mean, you know, I mean, it was just different. Mm-hmm. Sharp elbows and a fast mouth to, sh- to shut people down is what you kind of needed. And rightfully or wrongfully, that's the way it was. And I'm not saying he did it or I'm not saying he didn't, but there's a culture at the time. And I think there's a point where sometimes you have to just go, that was the culture and it's not good. You know, it wasn't good. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but we also have to look at his record because we're not voting for Biden as the woman's president. Or as a God, or as a savior, or as, as, yes. or, or, and our vote is not sacred. It's not a sacred part of myself that I'm giving to somebody and that I, I shouldn't withhold it from those who are undeserving. No, our votes are a tool. Yeah, right? and we, yeah, very much so. And we, and he's, you know, and we're, we're trying to find somebody who can run the government, handle foreign policy, handle all kinds of other things that require a lot of skills and a lot of judgment. It's a massive, it's a massive request, right? right, um, right. A lot of interpersonal skills, a lot of other things too. Now to go back to something that happened that long ago, that suspect that's coming up now in a big kind of way really does make me wonder. Yeah, you know, like in the big picture of things, this is crazy. Yeah, you know, it really is. If it was something that continued to happen or was an issue with character, that turns that flips the script into something else. It's also for running the government for four years. That's all it is. That's what it is. Right. It's not a lifetime appointment, which is also a different thing. There's it's 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 not the same. It's a different thing. And it does come down to character. And so just in total, I think we have to kind of look at it that way too. Are we going to pull one little thing out of that or even creepy Joe, which, you know, I'm not supporting him. Mm-hmm. feel uncomfortable when he was far past the point where he should have known better, but that still also is not, doesn't speak to his ability to run the country, to organize the country. And does it really speak to like a character flaw or some inadequacy that would make him unable to perform his duties as president? Well, yeah, and we have a a limited set of choices. I mean, quite honestly, all the candidates are human beings. Yes. They're they're not gods. They're not perfect. They're not going to be perfect. And every single candidate in that Democratic panel and every single candidate in the Republican panel and every single candidate, period has weaknesses and there is every candidate in the Democratic Party had weaknesses. And that's why they lost too, because of their weaknesses. If it were another candidate, it might be a different form of propaganda. I'm sure Mm -hmm. that they had all the propaganda set up for Bernie Sanders too. So we would be facing a lot of propaganda as well, even if Bernie were running. But this is the type of propaganda we're facing. And when you mention culture, it really, I mean, watch old, t- most people don't watch old TV programs, but I do sometimes. And it, it, you, you'll be amazed at some of the things they say on those programs that you would never get away with saying now. 
it reminds me a little bit, <clears throat> I wrote an article about Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia. And what happened with him, if you remember, there was this picture, again, everybody knew it was from right-wing sources mm -hmm. that they had found some yearbook picture of him in blackface. It turns out he doesn't know whether it was him or not, but it was so shocking that all the pundits came out against it. Even Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party said, just resign, resign. But then we realized, well, it's not just Governor Northam. We have problems with the lieutenant governor and the attorney general. And it was so it was a concerted, systematic propaganda attack to try and overthrow the Democratic leadership in Virginia. And it was so divisive. Everybody, oh, he's terrible. I mean, we're talking 50 years ago. In any way, it's probably not good. I don't even think white people knew what blackface was or understood it at all at that time. And even now, it's something maybe Ronald Reagan did in the 50s, you know. It, it doesn't really have the same impact on white people that uh, black people do. But the black people of Virginia were not fooled. The Democratic leadership was fooled. The punditry on MSNBC, they were fooled. And they were all out of their mind trying to figure out what, what's happening there. How can this happen? And right. he, he was in blackface. He's got to resign. But the black people of Virginia were no fools. They knew what was going on. And they, whether they liked him or not, I'm sure he had a lot of good policies that they supported. They were not about to hand their government over to right-wing Republicans just because they spread dirt on their governor. So this is kind of the situation that we're in here with Biden. Yeah. So, and if you, want, if you want to think about how things change so much, Everybody loves like Andy Griffith. Remember Andy Griffith show, right? right? I watch it. It's fun show. You know, it's really funny. But one of the things that stands out now is Andy Griffith, the sheriff, hired his incompetent cousin, Barney. Is that you what know? he was a cousin? Cousin. Okay. Yeah. So he, so Barney was his cousin. Mm -hmm. And so he kept his incompetent cousin on the public payroll who actually could have been a danger, so he couldn't even give him a gun, you know, like a gun. And you go through the whole thing, and it's kind of like everybody loves the show and thinks it's so cool, but you kind of peel back some of it and you go, you know, it's kind of like nowadays that wouldn't work, and it right. shouldn't work, right? Even Happy Days. Happy Days is a funny one, too. Late, mid to late 70s show, right? Uh -huh. Fonz? Yes, the I remember the Fonz. A gang member. A yeah. gang member. Right. You know, and yet, you know, everybody thinks the Fonz was so cool and, and everything else. But he was, was a philanderer too, right? Wasn't he a, he, he was kind of a, a Don Juan. Oh, yeah, like with Snap and the women would come to him. Come to him, yeah. Yeah. That. So that's another, I hadn't thought that. But the whole game thing. But yeah, exactly. He was like that too, you know, like, yeah. you know, I'm done with you on to the next kind of thing, right? Right, right, right. yeah. Oh, and so there are a lot of things. You know, when you look at it, you go, wait a second, you know, happy days, even happy days. This was like, a, he was a, a gang member. Now, if you take that and say, okay, Henry Winkler played a gang member, you know, back in the 70s. Can you believe that? How horrible, right? You know, like he was. Right, right. Well, they, this character in 2020 would just be abhorrent. Yeah. By yeah, I, standards. Yeah, it, yeah, it might be, yeah. And, and Andy Griffith would be an idiot sheriff who hired his incompetent cousin, which is cronyism, you know, like. Right. Yeah, and, and even some of the messages, you know, you get, sometimes they're good, but sometimes they're kind of, you know, not up to date, you know. And yeah. remember some episodes of the sort of moralism and things like that, they're, they're, they're not up to date. So. Well, just real quickly, because there was a, a Father Knows Best one that's uh -huh. like a classic where the daughter thinks she wants to be an engineer. Uh -huh. old, whatever, the daughter, the oldest daughter. And her dad and her older brother are like, you're just nuts. Why do you think you want to be an engineer? And so she goes on some construction site and she's determined and she's wearing boots and all of this jeans and not her dress. And she's going to do this. 
Well, the end of the show is her falling for one of the construction workers, mm-hmm. deciding that she was silly for even thinking she could be an engineer, right? And dropping the whole plan. And you married instead. Yeah, you know, I don't think she married she married this guy on the show, but she had her boyfriend, you know. Yeah. And so you just, you know, yeah. you kind of have to understand the context of things too. Yeah. Um, and I want to put out that we are doing a webinar meeting on Zoom on propaganda, where it comes from, what it is, and what can, we can expect this election. I think I said that in reverse, but anyway. To register for the program, I, we've got a URL. So it's tinyurl.com slash Y-A-A-W-L-S-X-R. So let me say that again. tinyurl.com slash Y-A-A-W-L-S-X-R. L S X R. You can also try and find it on Facebook. It's a Zoom meeting. There's press releases out there. You can Google it, propaganda, what it is, where it comes from, and what we can expect this election or what to expect this election. Put my name, Rich Proceda, and uh, you can find it on Facebook. So um, look for it and, and join us on that podcast because. We're going to talk about the effects of propaganda. We're going to talk about Tara Reid, but we're also going to talk about other propaganda and, and give people some basic information about propaganda so we, that we can all become better consumers of news and information. Well, thank you, Lisa, for the podcast, for being on the podcast. Did you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, actually, no, I don't. Okay, good. All right. So thank you for helping me out with this. And we'll see you next. We'll see you at the podcast because you're going to be on the on the webinar with me, Lisa Snow, media psychology specialist, author of what's the name? What was the name? Mind Media and Madness. Fake news, alt alt new alt facts. Fake and what's news next? and yeah, fake <laughs> news and yeah, we're, that's, that's, what we're, yeah. yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. What's next? Yes. So come and join us, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Bible Study for Progressives. If you enjoyed the program, please subscribe to our podcast or put us in your favorites and write a five-star review. Tell your friends about us and share us on social media. Follow us on Facebook and click the donate button at modernlectionaries.blogspot.com. Your support will help us reach more people, produce more and better shows, and cover the cost of production. Feel free to send me a note or comment on the show. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, this is Rich Proceda. Thank you for listening.